Okay, a great question just came up. Why does this even matter? Why do we care if something is one-to-one -one or not? And by the way, we were talking about the reason why this is not one-to-one -one is because for, for instance, this value of x equals two gives us the y value of two and this value right here of x equals negative two also gives us the same y value um, of two. So essentially what's happening is you have different values of x that are giving you the same value of y. So essentially y is repeating and because y can repeat with different values of x, we call this not one to one. And that's why it's failing the um, horizontal line test. So this all has to do with inverses. So we're going to talk about how we find an inverse function. And inverses is exactly what it sounds like. The inverse of a function basically undoes everything. So think about for a minute inverses. What's the inverse of addition? Exactly. What's the inverse of multiplication? Division. What's the inverse of squaring? Square root, exactly, square root of x is the inverse. So the inverse function basically undoes everything that it's the original function does. So the inverse function can be found by, these are the, the whole steps, and then we're going to show you a few examples. Interchanging the x and y's, and that is essentially, the whole crux of it is that essentially the inverse, since it undoes, the x and y's are going to swap. Okay. Then the newly formed inverse will be a relation, but it might not necessarily be a function. Every one-to-one -one function has an inverse that is a function. So only this function right here can we really find the inverse of, since this one is not one-to-one, -one, if we were to flip our x's and y's, what's gonna happen is this whole thing is going to rotate and then it won't pass the horizontal line test which means it won't be a function. Since the x and y's are going to swap, if we saw on the table of values x and y, x is negative 2, y is 2, and then x is 2, y is 2, if I swap those out, then my x's are going to be repeating. So therefore, it's not going to be a function. The inverse function is called f to the negative 1, and we just read this as the inverse function, but that's how we denote it, okay? So to find the inverse, our steps are going to be, if you have a given function f of x, you're going to write y in place of f of x, because we already know that y is equal to f of x, correct? So we've been saying all along about function notation. So we're just going to replace that function notation part with y. We'll switch our x's and y's. Then we'll solve for y. We'll rename the function f of to the negative one, which is the inverse function. And then if we want to check it, basically this comes back to the idea of composition of functions. When we were doing compositions of functions in the last lesson, if we put the inverse into the original function or vice versa, what will happen is everything will undo leaving x behind. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples here. The most basic thing, the most basic way to find an inverse is literally to swap the x's and y's. So here's our x, here's our y. What's going to happen is to find the inverse, the y value becomes the x and the x value becomes the y. So how will I, all I'll do is swap those points, 2, negative 4, 4, 0, 6, 4. So that would be a table of values example of how to switch, um, how to find the inverse is literally just changing the x and y values. On the graph, if I want to find the inverse, I'm going to also swap the x and y values. But my, what might be helpful here is to look and see, well, actually, this is the same as this graph here, isn't it? So, or the, the equation. Can you tell that when I look at this line, can you tell that that's the same exact equation of this line? What were some clues, actually? The y-intercept is 4. Good. And what, is it, what about the slope? 
1 over 2. So that's the slope. So let's just do, and I'll, I'll show you, we can do it on the graph without necessarily um, finding it algebraically, but the way we're going to do those steps that we just wrote down on the last page, is so we're going to replace the f of x with y. So now we have y equals 1 half x plus 4. I want to swap out the x and y. So all I do is I, wherever I see a y, I'm going to write x equals 1 half y plus 4. And this is the inversing part, is swapping the x and y's has created this idea of the inverse. If I want to get y by itself, now I'm going to undo. Remember how we were talking about what's the opposite of add? I want to solve for y now. Solve for y. So I have x minus 4 equals 1 half y. It's the opposite of multiplying by 1 half. Divide by 1 half or multiply both sides by 2. Yes, that's the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. 1 half of 2 leaves me with y. And now I have 2 times x minus 4. Or you could distribute, right? So another way of calling this, we're going to call it the inverse. So we go f to the negative 1 of x is equal to 2x minus 8. OK, now let's look at how we would graph that. So I have my slope. I have my y-intercept. Who can tell me what the y-intercept is? Negative 8. So this is starting way over here. Check it out. Over here, this point was 0, negative 8. The new point is, oh, I'm sorry, I had that backwards. Negative 8, 0 was the x-intercept of the first line. Its inverse has 0, negative 8 as its y-intercept. You see how the x's and y's just swapped. OK, now I'm going to use the slope. And so I'm going to rise how much? And run right. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. OK, you guys got the idea, right? Oops. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it right here. OK, and then if I take my ruler and I draw my line, you're going to start to see some of these ordered pairs. So. In the original function, and this was actually the table of values, I didn't realize that. This, is, this was the table of values of the first f of x function. This is the table of values for the inverse. So you can see some of these points on the graph. 2, negative 4 is here. 2, negative 4. On the original graph, we had negative 4, 2. OK. Then we have here is a point. 4, 0 is the x-intercept. What was the y-intercept on the previous graph? 0, 4. You see how those have swapped, right? And then why are they meeting at this point? What is this point right here? 8, 8. What happens when you swap 8 and 8? You get the exact same thing. Now here's another really cool thing about the inverses. Since the x and y's are swapped, there is a reflection over the line y equals x. Talk to me about the line y equals x. What's the slope and what's the y-intercept of that line? What's the slope of this line? And what's the y-intercept? So if I start here, 0, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, my slope is 1, OK, down 1, negative 1, down 1, back 1. OK, so here's the line y equals x. Do you see how the inverse is reflecting over that line? So that's going to be true of all inverse functions. If you graph one inverse, the other um, line, or whatever it is, parabola, well, curve, could be anything, is going to be a reflection over that line. Okay. 
Now there was one other thing that we didn't do, which it talked about in the steps. Can you see which step I ran out of space for? And I'm going to go on to more paper to do. Look back at your steps and tell me what step am I missing? The check. Okay. So the check looks like this. If I take F of the inverse I, to a composition, what should happen is everything should undo and I should get X left over. So what that looks like means to do that composition, we're going to take the inverse and plug it in to the original function. That's what similar to what we were doing. Um, that was the composition of functions, right? So we have one half times 2x minus 8 plus 4. Does everybody see how I got that? I'm just taking the f inverse and plugging it in for x here. So what happens when I try to solve this, when I simplify? 1 half of 2x is, yeah, 1x. Oops, why am I writing it to 1x? And then 1 half of negative 8 is, yeah, negative 4 plus 4. What's negative 4 plus 4? It's just x, right? x is the only thing left because that would be x plus 0. So you see what happened with it when I put the inverse back into the regular function, everything undid and the only thing left was x. You can also check it the other way. If you take the inverse function and then you compose that with the original function, what should be left is x. So that would mean I'm going to take this original function, I'm going to plug it in for x in the inverse. So I have 2 times 1 half x plus 4 minus 8. And when I simplify that, I'm going to multiply and distribute 2. 2 times 1 half is 1 again. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 8 is just x. Yeah, the only thing left is x. So that was my check. What do we think about that?